think this is it. Yes. The Victron Smart Shunt, it is finally here. So we can do the capacity test with the... What is this cable explosion here? We can finally do the capacity test now with the uh, QSO 230 ampere hour battery. Ooh, nice. Welcome back guys to another video here from the off -grid Garage. Today, today it was super cloudy again with some patches of blue sky, but ma mainly really dark gray, some showers and everything. And I made, um, I made 30, 30 kilowatt hours in these conditions. There. 30 kilowatt hours, that is f***ing insane. Yeah, we are recharged to 56% from down to 19 or so. So that is, I am stoked, I am stoked. Let me prepare the smart shunt and then we can start the capacity test. See how much ampere hours and kilowatt hours we will get out of this QSO battery here. Yeah, we, we should be at 99 point something uh, percent state of charge, but I will use my small power supply and fully charge it until the BMS turns off because we know the cells are not balanced well, so the BMS will shut down before we actually reach the 55.2 volts. And thanks to Auto, oh, you can hardly read it, Auto Parts Co. in Jamieson Town. This is somewhere down near Sydney. Well, if I buy equipment, I'm always looking online. And Auto Parts Co. is always at the top of the list for Victron gear. They are always the cheapest and they are the fastest. This took now only two days here to arrive. So thank you to Jack to Auto Parts Co. for sending this one over so quickly. And we can continue testing the QSO battery. Well, and if you are in the US, you can contact Off-Grid Power Systems. Um, they are off-grid, offgridps.com. I think they are in the Delaware area somewhere. Um, I link all this down below. Auto Parts Co. here for Australia and Off-Grid Power Systems for the US. If you are after Victron gear in these countries, definitely check them out. All the, the Lynx Power System, all three modules, Plus the two uh, 150, 70 solar charge controllers. I bought them from Auto Parts Co. here because they were by far, by far the cheapest and the quickest to send. Okay, that's enough of a plug, right? Let's get started with the smart shunt. I have connected already some cables here and I'll put it on the battery now. So I have disconnected our step loss batteries here from the uh, bus bar and reconnected the uh, and reconnected the QSO battery here on the other side. Positive connected and tight. Negative connected and tight. Negative goes to the two battery minus port of the um, smart shunt and the other side goes to our negative of the bus bar. Solar charge controller is turned off so we are not adding any energy while measuring the capacity and I've also turned off the BMS which I should have done in the first place when we connected the battery for the first time but where's the fun you know no spark no fun. There's no voltage on these two terminals at the moment so as soon as I turn them on now we will yeah there is 53.9 Got the smart shunt. Oh, we need to. Oh, we need to connect to the smart shunt and do a firmware update maybe before we can actually start. Let me check. Oh yeah, there it is. Here it shows up. Pair and connect. Okay. Yeah, and there it is. Firmware update. So we have to do the firmware update first. I think this is the Bluetooth firmware update first, and then there should be a second one for the smart shunt directly but we may be able to skip that. So let's wait for this to go through. It is now fully integrated into the family here. Ah, there's an exclamation mark, see that? That is new in the Victron software now. Yeah, I know that. And when you click on that wheel, it says, do not ask me again, enable now, that's fine. See, there's, there's another update for the actual firmware of the smart shunt, but you can just um, click out of the settings and you can use the smart shunt with the old version of the firmware. So this is new in the Victron software now. You are not forced to do the updates on these controllers or smart shunts anymore via Bluetooth. You can actually skip it and do it in a later stage when it's convenient for you. Big plus. And this is the actual firmware for the smart shunt before it was only for the Bluetooth. So I'll do the update quickly here and then we start the test. 
So we are now going through the first time setup of this smart shunt. It wants to know the battery capacity. So we have 230 ampere hours and the AUX input is set to nothing. I'm not worried about any of the other settings in here because, well, we won't use it as a, as a smart shunt as such. It is more like for capacity testing these larger batteries. I need some sort of reliable shunt and um, test. I call this one smart one, a uh, smart shunt test, smart one, smart shunt test. So we are not, we are not mixing this one up. All right. So, and I am charging this battery up to um, as high as possible now. I've set the, I'll show you. I've got our little power supply here running on 5 amps into this beautiful battery. 5.3 amps are going in and I'm trying to charge it up as high as possible, as much energy as possible. Just quickly connected to the software here, we can see we are at 54.7 volts, pack voltage and 5.3 amps are going into the battery. Four cells are over 3.45 already balancing. Cell number 16 is our runner, definitely. And we already have a deviation of 166 millivolt at not even 55 volts. So voltage should rise quickly now. The battery is actually saturated, so it shouldn't take too long to fully charge it. But I think before we will hit the 3.65 volts. Once this is occurring, I will go into the smart shunt, go into the history and reset the whole history. Yeah, it resets everything. And then later on, we can see here the um, the discharge energy in kilowatt hours and also the capacity in ampere hours. It gives us all kinds of statistics. So I think it's ideal for doing these battery tests here with these larger batteries then. And I'm driving this test without altering any parameters in the BMS. So it will be the standard default parameters. If we read the protection parameters again, so we will shut down the test at 2.7 volt cell voltage or 43.2 volts pack voltage. Whatever occurs first, we will shut down and that's the end of the test then. And as always, I'm dumping all this energy into the Tesla battery so it's not lost, it's not wasted. Okay, I can hear a beep. And now we have... <laughs> We have the Serbo GX complaining about a high voltage. This is the alarm. Now, this is actually the over cell protection which kicked in. The alarm doesn't kick in because the alarm is still sitting on 3.7 volts as per default. But this is the maximum we can charge the battery to now. From now on, it only gets uh, discharged. Okay, let's go into the history. Reset everything. Yes, I'm sure. I've turned on the Xia inverter on our and it has now started charging already. So we set this one here to like 80% or so. At the moment we are at 45%. So this is our load, 2.4 kilowatts, which will give us 33 amps only. Is that correct? 33 amps? Ah, here we go. Hang on. The Sofia is not the quickest. So ideal would be 46 amps because this is 0.2C for a 230 ampere hour battery. 230, uh, it's 23 times two is um, 46, 46, yeah. So this will go up and down here. It will not be constant because it's an inverter load and the current is going up and down all the time very quickly. And depending when the BMS measures, it shows you a higher or a lower current. The current may be a bit lower at the beginning here because the voltage is still very high. Oh, we should check our smart shunt test actually and see if this is all working. There we go. Negative 1.2 ampere hours. Oh, jeez. Negative 1.3 ampere hours. We have pulled already from the battery. And here in the history, we can already see that is 0.1 kilowatt hours of discharge energy so far. So perfect. That works perfect for me. I'm stoked. Okay, um, there is not much more to see now here. I guess we will see us again in about five hours. It is now 5 p.m. So there will be 10 p.m. Maybe a bit earlier. So we can witness when the BMS turns off and can live in the moment. All right, guys, you have a good um, evening and we'll see us later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay, before you go into your evening, I want to show you something here in the VIM under the SPED Calibration Center. This is all controlled with the Serbo GX from Victron, right? 
And we have now plugged in the 230 ampere hour QSO battery we are can into the servo and it reads all the information here just fine as you have seen before. What I have noticed is that the BMS of the QSO battery is not reporting the DC power as well. It, it shows the power here that there is a DC power, our XIA inverter, but it doesn't calculate any consumption, I believe. This is from today when the uh, Zeppelos battery, when the Zeppelos BMS was still connected. But um, you can see here it jumps from like 50% to 100 when I plugged in the QSO battery instead of the Zeppelos battery. And since then it has not moved one kilowatt hours. And the smart shunt shows us here uh, we, have, we have used already 0.2 kilowatt hours of the battery, but it's not, it's not reported here to the i don't know is this a victron problem or is this a shunt problem i'm not sure about this i thought about this this morning but i cannot cannot make sense out of it because so far only this smart shunt if connected to the servo shows the exact consumption in kilowatt hours here in the vim neither the link shunt nor the uh, qso battery shunt now the tanga tanga luma whatever it's called is showing DC power as a consumption in kilowatt hours down here. Hmm. Oh, 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 oh. Can't really. Yeah, I think it's the servo. The servo is already beeping. I may be a bit late for the. Yeah, here you can see the low um, state of charge alarm. So we are at 4%. So I need to check the Lynx shunt settings later and see if there's an alarm set which has triggered this beeping now. I thought this was coming from the BMS. I may be wrong. 50 amps discharging. We are at 48.25 volts. Seeing 85 millivolt deviation already. Okay, we're just having a quick look at the smart shunt test here. So, we have consumed 224 ampere hours already. That's not bad for a 230 ampere hour battery. So we are very close to the rated capacity of the battery. And let's have a look here. 11.6 kilowatt hours. I think 11.7 is what the battery is rated for. So this is all very close to the rated capacity. I'm I'm pleased with that. So obviously they are using very high quality cells for the battery build. And we are at 47 volts now. So yeah, the status is at 0% here already because I haven't set up the um, smart shunt correctly. So what does the BMS say? 2% left. We are at 47, 2.8 is our cell number three again. I have seen cell number three being low before. 100 millivolt deviation, that's all right, I think. So I doubt we will see another five ampere hours out of this battery here before we turn off. But again, we are turning off at 2.7 volts cell voltage. Here you can see it again. This is our cell under voltage protection, 2.7 volts. So it's not using 100% of the capacity, but this is the default setting of the BMS. And we want to test this first and see how far we come. So 226 ampere hours just pulled out of this battery. 2.8 volts, 46. But I think we will have cell number three terminating our discharge process here before that. Very interesting. 1% the BMS claims it has still left. And I can hear the fans are spinning down of the inverter already. There are 11.7 kilowatt hours we have pulled from this battery and 227 ampere hours now. There we go, 2.77, anytime, any moment. We've got another alarm coming up here. It's the cell low voltage alarm, so this all works fine. Yeah, we are still discharging. We are 227.5 ampere hours. And it should turn off. We have reached the 2.7, but there's a delay time programmed. There we go. We have turned off. Cell under voltage protection has kicked in. 
So that's pretty good actually. So the uh, smart shunt has turned off now. I have pulled up the screenshot here. This is the screenshot of the last moment of the BMS. So 228 ampere hours we have pulled, 11.8 kilowatt hours from the battery and it took 4 hours and 50 minutes to discharge this battery now. So interesting to see here is that there was a BMS warning and then there was a BMS alarm and I think the alarm was at the actual disconnect of the battery then. I'm not sure why the links, there might be some alarm set in the links shunt as well, which I have never touched. And this was the alarm beeping when I came in. So yeah, I think um, if we set the parameters here accordingly and, and discharge to 2.5 volts and also have the battery fully top balanced, we could easily get another 1.5 or 2 ampere hours out of this battery and could reach the actual 230 ampere hours of rated capacity. Ah, here, 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 I found it. I just had a look in the specifications of the battery again and it's rated with um, 11.776 kilowatt hours and we have reached 11.8 here as per the smart shunt measurement. So actually we are meeting all the rated specifications for this battery here. So I'm very surprised. I'm very pleased with that. As I just said, they must be using very high quality cells here for this battery. So overall, I can say even some of the parameters are not set correctly in the BMS. I'm really happy with the overall quality of this battery and the BMS as well. Even we cannot change any parameters officially, but I'm sure over time they will realize what kind of mistake they made to lock down the BMS. And they either give out the password for it and leave it unlocked or they come out with some new development in terms of new software which can handle that in a different way as we have discussed in the previous video. Okay, so I'm now going to recharge the battery just a tiny bit. Okay, let's turn on the current. Ah, you know what happens? The Tesla jumps in straight away and starts charging again and uh, stop charging here. As soon as I connected the power supply to the battery, the Tesla started charging again and <laughs> that's not what we want. Um, I'm just looked into the Lynx shunt and all the alarms are disabled here, but we still have a Lynx shunt low voltage alarm showing in the Victron system. So that is a mystery. Okay guys, so far this video from tonight, today and tonight, capacity test on the QSO 230 ampere hour battery here. Very good result. BMS is working as designed and I'm sure if we change the parameters accordingly in the BMS, we can make this battery here work for us. So pretty good. I'm very happy with the capacity test result. Still here, since we turned on the um, inverter and charged the vehicle, there's no load in uh, the Victron VIM. It shows the power of the DC load, but it doesn't calculate it. Another mystery. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for all your great support here on the channel. Welcome to all the new SPAT members. Thanks for your generous donations. And until the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then, bye bye. Okay, this will take a while to recharge this battery. Look at this linear discharge curve.